Pastor Lisa Semino here, and I am just blessed to be with you today. I'm so glad that you decided to join us. We just want to um, get right into the service, and I invite you right now to look to the Lord in prayer with me. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, for health, for strength. We ask, Lord, that you will bless us during this worship service, Lord, that you will tabernacle with us, Lord, that we will feel your presence, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be open, Lord, and to be attentive, Lord, to the word that you've prepared through your woman servant. We want to thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, for bringing us safely through another week, Lord, for keeping us, Lord, in times that maybe we may have wanted to give up, Lord, but you've just allowed us to just press on, and we just... Thank you for it. So again, Lord, we ask, be with us as we worship you in spirit of truth. And we pray, Lord, that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So we're going to continue on in the service with our scripture. And I invite you to... Um, Open your Bibles to the book of Romans. That's the book of Romans, chapter 12. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 3 through 6. And I will read in your hearing. For I say through grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly, if prophecy according to the proportion of his faith. May the Lord add a reading, a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his word. Amen. So today's message is entitled, Mountaintop Experience, Faith versus Fear. Let's get into the word. So faith, according to the scripture, will vary from person to person. The measure of faith that you received is enough to do whatever it is that God has called you to do. I like to think of faith like a muscle. The more you exercise and challenge it, the stronger it gets. But if you don't use a muscle, what happens? It weakens and worst case scenario, it is eventually rendered useless because of inactivity. Now, faith is the same way. The more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. The Bible is full of stories about people just like you and me who love God, serve God, and their faith was challenged by adverse situations. Now, regardless of the circumstances, the Word of God teaches us this in Romans 8, 28 through 31. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, then who can be against us? That's the word, family. That's the word. We know that God is almighty and all-powerful. And when we put our faith in God, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen? But if we're honest with ourselves, if we're truly honest with ourselves, we know that there are times that we experience fear. 
And I'm not talking about the reverential fear in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, you know, the, the reverential fear that we should have of God, that we should, you know, to fear God and keep his commandments. Family, I'm talking about a gripping, paralyzing fear that is a spirit. Yes, beloved, fear is a spirit and it is not of God. Therefore, fear is of the enemy. God knew that we would experience fear. He told us time after time in his word, do not fear, do not be afraid, fear not so many times. In 2 Timothy 1 and 7, the scripture says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So if you have that spirit of fear, that means that you're becoming unplugged, amen? 1 John 4 and 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So what does that teach us? Well, when we operate in fear, we are definitely not operating in power, we're not operating in love, and we're definitely not operating in, with a sound mind. Now, we do know that fear can be overcome. Fear is of the enemy, and we know the end of the enemy's story. We know the enemy is already a defeated foe. But if you'd indulge me, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like to share my mountaintop experience and three sermonic points with you today. So a few years ago, I had a singing engagement at a celebrity fundraising event in Paradise Valley here in Arizona. I left extra early because wasn't very familiar with that portion of the area. And oddly, I didn't ask as many questions as I, as I normally would. But, you know, I had the important information, the who, what, when, where, and why. Well, so following my GPS got me to, my, um, to the general um, area of my destination pretty easy. But somehow... Um, my GPS became a bit spotty and I overshot my destination and found myself driving on a road that started to go in a direction that I was not exactly comfortable with, up. Now for some people, this may not be a big deal, but I found out the hard way in 2010 during my husband and I's cross country drive from Michigan to Arizona. I found out that I at some point had developed a fear of heights. So there I was, steering wheel gripped, on a road going higher and higher up a mountain that I did not want to be on. But I was trying to be a big girl. I was trying to be a big girl because I was not going to let this mountain stand in the way of something that I love doing, singing. So family, there I was, praying, sweating, my mouth is dry, my phone signal was spotty, and I couldn't get a hold of my contact. So I continued driving, pushing past my heightened level of discomfort and my gospel music, I had turned down low because you know I need to concentrate. You know you have to turn your music down when you're trying to concentrate. Well, I came upon a residence's home and stopped in the driveway when the road was just too steep and too narrow for me to continue. I, I just about had enough. So there I sat in my vehicle, emotionally paralyzed and family. I was almost at the point of tears. So at the time, um, I was driving up big vehicle, a Lincoln Navigator, and I'm sitting there thinking, how am I going to turn this big vehicle around so that I can head back down this mountain? Call for directions and assistance at the residence call box, no answer. I finally got through to my contact and told them, listen, somebody's got to come and get me up off this mountain. But the musicians were setting up and it was almost time for them to start. Family, I was feeling 
so incredibly defeated. It seemed I didn't have enough room and I had about half an hour or so before I needed to be in place. And it was just beginning to get dark. So I sat there taking all of this in and the Holy Spirit gently urged me to get out of the car. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> again, the Holy Spirit gently urged me to get out of the car. And it just seemed like something just shifted in me. So I took a deep breath. And I said, okay, Jesus. And I got out of the car. Which leads me to my first point. Family, when you are in a situation that has you riddled with fear, First, you've got to get your focus off your problem and onto Jesus. The first thing I noticed was the beautiful view from the mountain. It was absolutely breathtaking. I felt myself just welling up from the sheer beauty of the view, a view that I never would have seen had I not driven up that mountain. The next thing I noticed was that I did have enough room to turn the mothership, as I call it, around and get back down that mountain. I thanked and praised God. I had a shouting session right there. And I was encouraged and I claimed that promise that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That I could look at this mountain of fear and I can say, be ye moved. Which brings me to my second point. Ask the Lord to give you the help you need. It's one thing to say the Lord is my helper, and he is. But it's another in the midst of that situation to say, Lord, help me today right now in this situation and to be specific about what you need the Lord to do. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 reminds us, be careful. I like the way some um, translations say, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The family, the measure of faith I received was enough to do what God had called upon me to do. When I stopped operating in fear, a shift occurred. I plugged into the power of God and I started operating in power, operating in love, and operating with a sound mind. Which brings me to my third point. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. By studying the word of God on a regular basis and quoting it often. Because Sometimes you need a fear-busting breakthrough right now because you don't always have time to call your friends and maybe ask for a scripture or, or ask, will you pray for me? Family, you will be able to stand even in the midst of the storm and boldly proclaim, I am standing on the promises of God, trusting, knowing, and believing that he's going to bring you through. Now, wouldn't you rather stand on the promises of God in the midst of a storm than sitting on the premises with no hope? Family, what God showed me was that I had been through many mountains before, but what I re didn't realize, I was never driving. Somewhere along the way, fear had attached itself to me, but now it was my time to drive. It was my time to face my fear. But when fear is knocking at the door of your heart, you must call upon your faith to answer the door. God assured me that I was going to get back down that mountain. I just had to exercise my faith in him. Now, you know, when I was on my way to my engagement, I was on level ground. I was relying on my GPS to get there, but oh, when that mountain appeared, yeah, that part. When faced with that mountain, that mountain that weakened that GPS, 
GPS couldn't help me. Only G-O-D could help me. The measure of faith that I received from God was bigger than my fear and gave me all that I needed to get back in that car and prepare to drive back down that mountain because that seemed to be my only option. And at that point, I was okay with it. But just like he did from April, Oh, the Lord had a ram in the bush for your girl. As I was getting ready to get in the car to turn it around, just then I noticed there was a young lady jogging up the hill. And she immediately came over and introduced herself and asked if I needed help. Her name was Megan, which means God is great. Oh, yes, he is. Great is the Lord and worthy to be praised. Megan offered to turn my vehicle around as she had done so many times with her own. She told me the residents um, that lived in the home where I was um, where I was parked weren't even in town, that they don't live there full time. And she took me back down the mountain. Oh my goodness, I hugged her so tight. I was so grateful. And bless heaven, I made it to my engagement with time to spare. Hallelujah, as we say, look at God. Now I'm gonna be honest. I'm still not fond of mountains, but God not only promised, but gave me victory over that mountain when I trusted him. When fear was knocking at the door of my heart, I sent my faith to answer. And when I stepped on faith, I saw that God had a ram in the bush, a ram with an option that I had not even considered. But I have a question for you. What are you fearing that's standing in the way of your victory? What is it that has you paralyzed with fear? Today, God is urging you, just like he did me, to get out of that car. And family, I'm here to encourage you, please get out of that car. Because there are some things like me that you can't see in that vehicle. When I was sitting in that car, it looked like I didn't have enough room to turn around because I realized that fear limits your vision. But when I got out of that car, out of that situation that fed my fear, I could see beyond my circumstances, beyond my limitations, that I had more than enough room to turn around. I could see beauty and hope in an undesirable situation, but I had to get out of the car to see that. And that GPS, that GPS could not help me on that mountain. Family, that GPS is what got me on that mountain. But G-O-D, by his grace and mercy, gave me what I needed. That measure of faith to take that first step to get me off that mountain. So in that moment, when your worst fear is knocking at the door of your heart, call upon your faith, trust God, and move in faith. And trust me, God will test us, but he will never tempt us. And that test, that test became my testimony. You know, Inez Andrews has a song that I used to sing years ago saying, my Lord, don't move my mountain. I know you've heard it. My Lord, don't move my mountain, but give me the strength to climb. And Lord, don't take away my stumbling block, but lead me all around. Yes, Lord. Family, I pray that you were blessed by today's message. And um, if you've not already accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or if you wanted to rededicate yourself, I invite you to pray with us. I also, during this appeal, want to um, call upon those who are dealing with a spirit of fear. If you are tired of dealing with that spirit of fear and you want the Lord to deliver you from that spirit, I invite you to pray with us as well. You know, we're living like we have time and we don't. When we look around at the world and all that's going on, we know that time is short and Jesus is coming soon. I know that you've heard that all your life, but look around, look around. It's terrible. 
But even in the midst of all this chaos, we can have peace. We can have peace because we know that God has already gone to prepare a place for us. And if we want to claim that promise, we need to be in the body of Christ. We need to be in the body of Christ. We need to be part of the family, part of the fold. And so as we go to the Lord in prayer, I invite you to just open your mind and your heart to Jesus as we look to him. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this beautiful sermon, Lord. We thank you for this testimony. I thank you for bringing me through that mountaintop experience, Lord. And Lord, we, we are just praying, Lord, that your children that have a desire to just come home, be it for the first time or just to return home, Lord, we know that you have always been standing there with your arms wide open, waiting for them to come. Lord, we also lift up our brothers and sisters that are battling a spirit of fear. But Lord, we know that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And so, Lord, as we claim the promise that perfect love casteth out fear, we know that we do not have to be afraid. We know that, Lord, as long as we trust and believe in you and operate in faith, Lord, we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. That is a promise. And we claim that promise in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we ask, be with us. Help us, Lord, in those moments that we feel fear. Remind us to just call upon your name because we know in just calling your names, demons tremble. There is power in your name, Lord. And we thank and praise you for it. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Though so many times we can be so unlovable. And thank you for holding on to us, Lord, and, and, and being patient with us. Because, Lord, we know we require so much patience. We thank you, Lord, for your infinite grace mercy, wisdom, and your love. But most of all, Lord, we're thanking you in advance for saving us in your kingdom. These and all things we humbly ask, believe, and claim in the worthy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen, family. Let us repeat our benediction together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.